Hi everyone, welcome to new video from Not Real Engineering. In this video, we are going to discuss visco elasticity analysis in Abacus CAE. And as an example, we will simulate a creep test for material epoxy. But before I go into this, let me briefly explain what is visco elastic material. We all know what is elastic material. A elastic material can be represented by a spring and it obeys Hooke's law. So this is the simplest form of Hooke's law where stress is directly proportional to strain. What this means is, if we apply a load on elastic material, then as we apply a load, there will be some instantaneous deformation. As long as we keep that applied load, the deformation will be also constant. And when we remove that load, all of the deformation will be recovered back, which means elastic material retain their original shape once load is removed. And on the other hand, what is viscous material? So viscous material obeys this law where stress is directly proportional to strain rate, not strain. And viscous material can be represented using a dash pot. And when we apply a load over here, what will happen is, as long as load is applied, the deformation will keep on increasing. And when we remove the load, then whatever deformation occurred, that will be permanent. It will not be recovered back at all. So these are basic elastic and viscous material. And as name suggests, viscoelastic material is nothing but which has property of both of them. So how to model viscoelastic material? It's simple. We have to use spring as well as dash pot. So the simplest form is a spring and a dash pot in series. This is also known as Maxwell fluid model. Over here, let's say if we apply a load, what will happen is because of this spring, there will be some instantaneous deformation and then that deformation will keep on increasing as long as load is applied. And when we remove the load, whatever instantaneous deformation happened, that will be recovered back because of this spring. And there will be some permanent deformation as well, which will be because of this dash pot. And another simple model can be a spring and dash pot in parallel, which is known as cave in solid model. Now, if we apply a load over here, then can you tell me what will happen? Yes, because of spring, there should be some instantaneous deformation, but dash pot will resist that. And because of dash pot, there should be a permanent deformation. Spring will resist that. So the deformation will be non-linear. It will keep on increasing and it will reach some saturation point. And if we remove the load, Again, the deformation will be recovered back because of spring, but in a non-linear fashion. So these are just two basic simple models. Of course, the real materials response will be much more complicated. It will not be something like this or even this. So for that, what we can do is we can use different combination of spring and dash pot and create much more complicated models. I'm not going into detail of much more complicated models and how to create its constitutive relation. For that, I have another separate video on this channel. If you are interested, please look into that. In that, we will see standard linear solid model, which is known as SLS model or many more models. And we will see how to create a constitutive model and solve it analytically if you know the spring and dashboard combination. So let's get back to our problem. We are going to simulate a two dimensional creep test. This is a polymer bar. Dimensions are given over here. The bar is fixed at right end and we will apply some constant pressure on the left end. And we will hold this applied pressure as shown over here for one hour. If the specimen is under constant load with respect to time, its strain will keep on increasing. It will keep on deforming. That is known as creep. So what we should expect over here to see is there should be some instantaneous deformation, but that deformation should keep on increasing as time goes on. Also, as time is involved, we have to use dynamic implicit step. We cannot do this with static step. And also in abacus, there is a facility of visco step, but that is usually when you have coefficient of thermal expansion. For this case, we don't need that. Now we are using epoxy as a material for this bar. Now there are many ways to provide viscoelastic material parameters into abacus. One of the way is prony series. In this video, we will use prony series, but there are some other ways as well, which we will see in future videos. Prony series is nothing but an equation which tells us the relation between shear modulus and time. So this T over here, small t is time and this is shear modulus. This equation can also be converted into frequency domain, but we'll not go into that in this video. So to describe parameters in Prony series, what we have to define is first instantaneous shear modulus, which is given over here. And along that we have to define relaxation modulus and relaxation time. And whatever value of N you choose, 
depending on that you will have a table of relaxation modulus and relaxation time for this example i am choosing n as 4 therefore i have four values of relaxation modulus and four values of relaxation time apart from this we also have to define instantaneous young's modulus instantaneous poisson's ratio and density we are going to stick with si mm units for this video and these prony series parameters are actually unitless let's start with abacus ca first set up your working directory and then create a part two dimensional shell i'm just going to use a rectangle tool and then let's adjust the dimensions this one is 100 and this one is 10 say ok next go to property create a material epoxy first let's define density density is 1.18 into 10 raised to minus 9 then go into mechanical and define elastic properties over here you have to change this moduli time scale to instantaneous our instantaneous young's modulus is 4060.1 and instantaneous poisons ratio is 0.37 then again go into mechanical elasticity and we will define viscoelastic material here change this domain to time and select prony over here now this g underscore i is relaxation modulus as shown over here in this table and then this tau underscore i is relaxation time as shown over here in this table so i will just input this table over here i just entered this table over here and for us k is not changing with respect to time therefore here you can just enter zero that's it say okay create a section solid homogeneous section and assign it to our part then go to assembly create a instance next go to step create a step over here you have to choose dynamic implicit say continue now our time of simulation is one hour which means 3600 seconds then go into this incrementation for viscoelastic material it is hard to convert the solution with this big time step so I'm going to reduce it to 0 0.01 and minimum also maybe I will use 1 into 10 raised to minus 12. Let's increase this number of increments also to 10,000 and then say OK. Next go to load. Let's fix the right end. Just U1, U2, 0 and let's apply a pressure on left end. pressure should be minus 10 minus because we want tensile load now we want to plot a curve of how strain is changing with respect to time for that we have to raise a history output so in order to do that first go into this assembly double click on this sets and let's create a geometry set of this left end just choose this left edge and once that set is created go into this history output request double click on this say continue over here in domain go to set and choose our left end set then this frequency set it to one which means the abacus will save output after every increment and go into strain and select e11 because we just want strain in x direction similarly if you want you can choose displacement also let's say u1 and say ok now last step is go to mesh first change it to part then go to mesh controls choose structured mesh with quad elements say ok then seed the part maybe with one looks good and mesh it you can assign element type as well go to element type in mesh select this domain so depending on if you want plain stress, plain strain, I'm going to keep it as plain stress and maybe I will remove this reduced integration as well. Now final step, go to job, create a job, creep test epoxy, 
say continue, say OK, and that's it. Submit the job. You can see over here time step is very small, but it will increase. See now it is increasing. So that's why it is important to choose automatic time increment. So Abacus can increase it whenever possible. Okay, job is done. Let's go into results. And as you can see, it is almost uniform stress. Only some stress concentration is near the fixed end. You can also see displacement by changing this to U. You can also animate this in time by using this command. But we are interested to plot the graph of how strain is changing with respect to time. So for that, go into this create XY data. Select ODB history output, say continue. And over here, you can see the displacements and strain in X direction for all the points which are on the left face of this bar. So all the points over here. You can choose any one point from here. Everything should be same and say plot. And now, and now you can see over here how strain is changing with respect to time. You can see over here there is some instantaneous deformation when we apply a load and then that deformation goes on increasing and it reaches a, some saturation value. So this increase is not linear. It is some non-linear form. So this is quite complicated model. This is not just one spring or one dashboard. But you can see because there is instantaneous deformation, it means there should be some spring in series. You can also plot displacements. You can plot multiple displacements also together. Displacement is going into negative because this is in negative x direction. But basically the trend is same, some instantaneous elongation and then that elongation keeps on increasing. If you like this video, please show your support by subscribing to this channel, which will give me motivation to create more educational videos like these. You can also go to channels playlist tab and here you can see all the videos with similar topics combined together. For example, let's say if you're interested in ANSYS tutorials, you can go to this ANSYS tutorial playlist and see all the videos from this playlist. All the codes and files which I use for these videos are also available for you to directly download from this channel's GitHub profile. The link of this profile is given in the description box below. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.